Hello biologists, we, today we are looking at communicable diseases taken from 4.1.1 for OCR A-level biology specification A and we are looking at the structure and general function of antibodies and also the outline of the action opsins, agglutinins and, and, and antitoxins. Okay, so we here we have two diagrams of an antibody. Don't forget that antibodies are made from plasma cells and we looked at how they are made through the immune response a couple of videos ago in case you want to go back and recap that. The one on the left hand side is a slightly more complicated diagram and the one on the right hand side is a slightly a simpler version, all showing um, an antibody. So antibodies are proteins. So if you need to go back and have a look at your protein structure, um, as a recap, they are made of four polypeptide chains. You've got two light and two heavy chains. Uh, these are held together with disulfide bonds or disulfide bridges. Um, they have variable regions at the end, which is the purple area on this simplified diagram. And these variable regions are complementary and specific to the antigen, which is on the cell surface membrane of the pathogen. They have more than one variable region and also this hinge region here in the middle, which isn't labeled the hinge region here, uh, which allows for flexibility. The, because it's got more than one variable region and due to this hinge region, this allows the antibody to bind to more than one antigen or more than one pathogen. Um, we've got the constant region here. This area, this constant region, which is the heavy chain area, this allows the uh, phagocyte to bind to the, the antibody, therefore aiding in the process of phagocytosis. So I just want to draw your attention just one more time to this part, the variable regions here. Can you make sure that you're saying that they're complementary and specific to the antigen, not the pathogen, otherwise you won't get the marks. What's quite popular here is synoptic questions linking into the ultrastructure of the plasma cell. Don't forget the plasma cell is the one that makes the antibodies. So therefore, what organelles must be present within the plasma cells to make those proteins. If you need to go back and have a look at the ultrastructure and organelles that are needed. So we've done lesson objective H, looking at the structure and the general function. We're going to now look at more specific functions of the antibody and what else it can do. So opsonins, an opsonin is a is this is a process by which antibody binds to another substance. Um, so in this diagram here, you can see that we have our antibodies and they're bound to antigens on the cell surface membrane of my pathogen due to the complementary and specific areas of the variable region of the antibodies. Now, opsonins, these increase the chance of phagocytosis as the antibody can then bind to both the pathogen and the phagocyte. Because don't forget the pathogen is bound to the variable region of the antibody and the phagocyte can bind to the constant region, therefore aiding phagocytosis. We've got agglutination, which as it sounds, I glue, glue. Uh, this is where the antibodies are clump or bind together the pathogens or many pathogens. This makes them too large to enter into any host cells. Um, so in order for these pathogens to cause harm to us, they need to actually enter into our cells. So if they're all stuck together in this big clump, they cannot get into the cells. Also, it increases the chance of phagocytosis occurring because you can see that the constant regions are available here to bind to the uh, phagocyte during phagocytosis. And the last one, neutralization. This is where antibodies will either cover the binding sites on a pathogen or bind to toxins. So if they're bound, or, so if they cover the binding sites on a pathogen, they can therefore not enter our cells. And equally, if they bind to toxins, they act as an antitoxin in that way. Therefore, the toxin cannot harm our cells or enter our cells. Okay, so those are the main points to do with the structure and the function of antibodies and the action of those three things there in lesson objective I. Re remember in your exams, don't use the word um, the words it, amount, they, or size, and use good terminology with biological uh, knowledge and words, and good luck for your exams.